I don't think people realize just how important music is in video games. Let me explain. Hey hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here. And yes, today we'll be tackling video game music, the importance of it, how it can completely change how a game feels, and to back it all up, I'll have examples aplenty. Music is what really dictates how you feel playing a game, but that also applies for when there's no music. Certain games on purpose leave out music for then in turn making the sections that do have music feel more special. A good example of this is Outer Wilds, which most of the time leaves you with the emptiness of space and only your breathing to break the silence. When music does then kick in, you know you're on the right track. This is an important section. Let me explore this a bit further. Similarly, in Hollow Knight, the intro platforming section doesn't have any music, but then when you enter Dirtmouth, the first town in the game, it feels much more special. You know that place is important. But what were to happen if we changed the soundtrack of this game? Would the visuals hold up like the mood of the entire game, or would everything change completely? Everything would change completely. Not only the mood of the game, but also characters' dialogues. For example, when you talk to Elderbug, the music really helps to emphasize that Elderbug is quite done with it all, you know? He once lived in this prosperous town that now only has a few inhabitants. But now let's turn to the first experiment of this video. Let's change the song from Deathmouth to a song from the game A Short Hike and, well, take a look for yourself. It now feels completely different entering this town. It feels like you have hope, like, oh, maybe we can rebuild this town. And Elderbug, he seems like he is encouraging you to go downstairs and seek out some adventure. Nothing has changed about the dialogue of the visuals, but only with the change of the music, the vibe and everything. Like, you're almost playing an entirely new game. Let's try another experiment with the game Cuphead. Now, this game has a brilliant 1930s big band soundtrack and if we were to take it out, you, you know, just turn the music all the way down. Something is missing, something is weird. It feels like almost some sort of horror game. Like, I mean, talking of horror, let's try and put on some horror music. <laughs> Yeah, this doesn't feel good at all. It feels like when talking to Elder Kettle, he will just stab you in the back the second you turn on his back. He's gonna turn up with a knife and yeah, you get the point. Let's do a final example. Let's put Celeste music over Mario. Okay, that's actually kind of dope, but you get my point. And what I'm trying to say here is that don't take video game music for granted because they are such a big part in what makes those games that you love, those games. Video game music is just so incredibly underrated. I see so many people who say, oh yeah, that's video game music, but it's not real music, where I in fact listen to video game music so much more just because I find it more pleasing to listen to than, you know, real songs. I just don't think it gives it enough credit to just call it video game music. There's so many different soundtracks in all different kind of genres. I feel like video game music is what animation is in the movie industry. Oh yeah, animation, you know, it, it's not a real movie, but, but it's like an art form in itself, just like video game music is something completely different than, you know, regular songs. The reason I've been thinking a lot about video game music recently is not only do I just enjoy to listen to it, but I've been composing some tracks myself just for the fun of it. And there's just so much thought that goes into, okay, let's play these chords here, these tones, and then you'll get that emotion when you see this. And I recently talked with the composer of Eastward himself, Joel, and he said that they bring in composers fairly early on because they kind of help shape what the game turns out to be. They have to help find the tone of the game, you know, what accompanies these visuals to make it feel that sense of 
Oh, this is a nice feeling. So yeah, that was just really interesting and I hadn't really thought about that. Maybe I just thought, okay, they make the game, then they make the music after, but this completely makes sense. Of course, it's not only in video games, but it's like in all media in general that music helps you feel certain emotions in movies, but also when you just listen to music, that's background music to your life. But to give you one last example of how much music matters, let's try and change the background music for the outro and you can see just how weird that feels. Don't forget to check out our website nintendolove.com for all sorts of Nintendo related content and if you enjoyed this video why don't you put on a great soundtrack and then just feel your way to that subscribe button and give it a little click. I hope that this video showcased just how much power music has in your video game playthroughs. It's also you know what drives most of nostalgia because you hear certain tunes and those tunes warp you back to a time that you wish you could be in. But what are some games that you just think, man, I could not picture that game without that soundtrack? Well, let us know down in the comments below. And as you can see, that song that has played during the outro has completely changed how an outro feels. So let's change back to something that I would normally play during an outro. All right then, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh,